Hello, my name's Andy Paramore and this is Andy's Cornish Creations. In this video I'm going to be turning a penguin and uh, here I've got uh, three pieces of wood glued together, two pieces of wenge and one piece of a pale oak and uh, you can see there I've drawn on it roughly the shape that it's, uh, it, it's going to be uh, from a side profile uh, just to help me to uh, work out where I'm going to turn where I can turn without uh, without taking parts off that I don't want to anyway we'll uh, we'll move on to the video now okay I've marked on here roughly where I want to go down to so I can use this as a reference as I turn it away I've got to leave those those points uh, so it is going to be sticking out a bit but I'll get some of it down to start off with and just roughly shaped out make sure it spins okay That'll be nice and tight Pulls on Turning at 1000. Here I'm using my 3 8 inch spindle gouge and uh, working on the head. I've got to be a bit careful here because the uh, the piece of wood with the uh, with the nose of the with the beak of the um, penguin is sticking out, and I can only I can only turn it down to the underside of that beak I can't uh, in it position as it is it won't reach the back of the head so you can see there I've got as far as I can with the turning as far as the uh, head's concerned so now I'm just going to turn the body down uh, turn it down to round first and, uh, and I'll put a tenon on the bottom so that I can fit it into, a, into my chuck so that if I do need to work on the head without tailstock support, I'll be able to do that. So here I'm just turning a, a tenon on there for my uh, for my small chuck, and there I'm just putting a a dovetail on the bottom of the tenon. Okay, I've got the um, the widest point and the narrowest point there. That's the neck, and that's the base. So I'll start narrowing the neck down a bit. I know that the neck is only about half an inch in diameter uh, uh, so I'm going to work this down until it's uh, down to about that and then just uh, have a little look at it. Right, I want to get it, I want to get it past that point there so that the uh, the chest finishes here. I don't want this line up here. I'm starting to get a bit worried at this point. The neck's getting a bit thin, but I, I've still got a little bit showing there, but I managed to just get rid of it without it being too thin. I'll just finish off shaping the body, and now I'm parting off where the bottom's going to be. Not to go too thin at the bottom. Just uh, want it to be fairly stable when it's stood up, not be falling over all the time. Here I'm using the skew just to take out any high points or any tool marks. And it's a great way of just evening out the uh, sort of peaks and the troughs. 
from the uh, from the gouge. Okay, I'm going to sand this part and finish it off. Yeah, so I'm going to turn it off centre a little bit. So I'm going to get this finished because we don't need to touch this again anyway. So uh, we'll get it sanded. Start off at um, 120 and I'll go up to 400. enough. I'll come back when it's uh, ready for plates and finish. Okay, I'm ready to apply a bit of uh, abrasive paste. You can see the green on the uh, on the wood starting to come out now. It's looking uh, looking quite nice. Just spin up. This will be spinning at probably about 400 just to apply the abrasive paste and then I'll, I'll get it spinning a bit higher just to speed up the process and put a bit of heat into the uh, into the wax so that it, uh, so it does its job. Get rid of any excess paste. Oh, that's already looking pretty good. Finished off with a bit of um, French polish. Uh, where are we? There we go. See that? Again, here it looks spinning at about 400 revs. By the polish, you only need a very light touch with this. If you press on too much, it tends to tends to um, heat up, and uh, it just doesn't polish. Whoops! It doesn't polish the same. Get that back. That's why you only hold on to rags very lightly. I have tried uh, using paper towels with the French polish and it just doesn't, just doesn't work the same which is why I, uh, I still use a rag but I do just very lightly hold on to it yeah. oh, that's a beautiful shine smooth as silk Okay, so I've cut this off with the bandsaw, and I want to, I want to make it off centre because I can't turn the back of the head. If I try and turn that, it'll cut, it'll cut off the beak, uh, which is no good. So if I if I if I take it off centre, I'll be able to cut the back of the head without cutting the beak off, hopefully. So I'll just loosen, loosen that off a little bit and uh, bring the tail stock up. Whoops. Right then. Um, 
just sending it off centre, tailstock up, pinch it and tighten that up again. Lock that up. Hopefully, I should be able to get a good idea. By turning it, the, the nearest point to the tool rest is where I'll be cutting. So if the beak's almost touching the tool rest and the back of the head isn't, then uh, then I know it's going to be cutting the beak off before the back of the head. What I actually want is to be cutting off the back of the head and uh, and the, and the beak uh, not being touched at all. We'll give that a little try. Right, just position that. You can see there the, the beaks away from the tool rest and the back of, he back of the head's nearly touching it. There, uh, we've got, because these pieces are all stuck on, I'm going to be a little bit more careful, so we've got the old visor on, and we'll see if we can't turn that down a bit. Start off slow. That will be about 400 revs. turn the uh, piece round before switching it on just to make sure it clears the rest especially with bits sticking out like that Okay, the finished head is only about 40 mil wide, which is um, <coughs> an inch and a half. Um, so I'm just going to mark that on there, and that's that's what I, I can take it over to the bandsaw, and I can cut that down. And uh, at least take that material off. Um, quite easily. Because the rest of it's going to have to be sanded down. I want to re remove as much bulk as I can um, before I start sanding. Because it's going to be a bit of a lengthy process. So I'll, uh, I'll go and do that and then come back. Okay, so I've, I've got some of the bulk off with the uh, bandsaw and um, what I've got now is I've got one of these, I can't remember what they call them, but they, they're like the, the uh, sort of two inch velcro ones, but they've it's got a little twist fitting on it, which is quite nice, and it's a little bit larger than two inch, uh, and I'm fitting that onto a, it's a Makita angle drill.
which uh, makes a quite a handy little um, sort of sander polisher set up. Help. Get it going the right way around. There we go. And I can put uh, it in the, in the chuck so I can lock it up and then start. It's all going to be a bit sort of freestyle and uh, I'm just going to have to keep taking stuff off, having a look at it. I can do the back shape without worrying about it too much. You could do this with a file if you wanted to, if you haven't got uh, anything that would sand it down like this. I've, uh, I've put this tape on uh, just in case it slips and catches the body so I don't have to polish it all up again. And the tape's just decorator's tape. I use that because it comes off really easily and cleanly. And I did wrap it around a rag as well so that it wasn't just the tape. It's a, it's a rag wrap around it and then and then tape around that just to give it a bit of thickness. And I'm going to carry on doing that for a while and uh, come back when, it's, uh, when I've got a bit further. These discs are called Rolock sanding discs, R-O-L-O-C. I've switched now to my um, compact rotary tool. This is um, a Triton, little Triton one with a uh, with like a disc uh, drum sander on it. Handy for the little awkward places like that that you can't get in with much else. Quite easy to sand the bottom half of the head, and I mistakenly think that it might be a good idea to uh, try and sand the top 
but uh, yeah, it's not a good idea with that uh, pointy bit spinning around. <laughs> Onto 240 grit. And there's still some flat spots on the uh, head and beak. So uh, I still have a bit of sanding to do, but I'm going to apply a bit of abrasive paste first. And I'll sand it while the paste is still on. That's a bit of mineral oil just to uh, help lubricate it while I'm sanding. The noise in the background is of course the rain. It's uh, mostly raining quite heavily while I'm filming this one. <laughs> and the mineral oil does help to uh, keep the dust down as well. And it sands quite well and can clog up the, uh, the well, it's wet that piece there, a piece of wet and dry, but the sandpaper and the wet and dry. So we'll be finishing this by hand, so I'm trying to get as smooth a finish as possible. Back on with the uh, abrasive paste, just to try and smooth it out that little bit more. I'll get rid of the excess and then again I've applied some French polish and just buff it up by hand again it's a very light touch with the French polish This Wenge does have a really lovely green to it. And by look rather than judgment, uh, the, the two woods, the green seems to run sort of together there. And you see there it's, it's almost following each other around. Or perhaps I did plan it after all. <laughs> Parting it off with a thin parting tool, going undercutting it slightly so that, uh, so that it sits on the table nicely, and just sits on the outside edge rather than sitting in the middle and wobbling. Started off with an idea from Pinterest and a video I saw of uh, Carl Jacobson um, doing a very similar thing. Uh, he actually did it in one piece of timber and painted the two different, um, well the black and the, and the paler chest. Uh, so I started off with this one just to get an idea of how I could make it and how little timber I could get away without, uh, without using. Uh, and then, um, and then finished up, finished up with that, and I'm really pleased with it. Um, yeah, the shape of the head it took a bit of working away, but um, but it uh, it really does. Um, I think I think it looks a lot more elegant than uh, than a lot of the um, penguins out there. And there's a lot, there are a lot of how to make a penguin uh, uh, videos. But uh, yeah, yeah, I like this one. It's a, it's a bit different. Um, yeah, the overall takes a bit of takes a bit of 
putting the pieces together and getting your head around it a bit, uh, especially with slightly with the offset turning, although I don't, I'm not sure that that's totally necessary, you could just turn the body and then just carve the head uh, completely, sort of freestyle, but, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, turned out nice. So, hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, like and share and all those good things and um, again thank you for uh, for all those people that have bought me a coffee uh, over the last year uh, uh, that's been great and uh, and of course to all my subscribers and um, and uh, commenters and uh, so please do subscribe if you haven't already and please do leave a comment uh, I do, I certainly read them all, um, still trying to get around to answering them all, but uh, I will get there. So, thanks for watching, my name's Andy Paramore, this is a very wet <laughs> Cornwall, and it has been throughout the uh, uh, Christmas holiday, um, but uh, it has given me the opportunity to have a bit of workshop time. <laughs> um, so, again, thanks for watching. And uh, have a great year. Goodbye. Here are the dimensions on the left of the uh, dimensions of the block, and uh, on the right, the finished dimensions.